Hello friends, uh, I'm Jez and uh, welcome to the uh, Jez UK High Performance Computing Laboratory or the spare room in my house uh, where I've been <laughs> working for approximately the last 20 years. Uh, as I uh, you've probably read in the introduction, I'm using uh, chapter 4, the start of chapter 4 of this wonderful book uh, just as a little exercise to uh, just uh, do a little bit of coding, implement a little bubble sort, and give it the same interface as a, a, the standard sort that we find in the in the C++ library. So let's uh, let's fire up C Lion here. Now there's not a lot of work to do in the kind of design of the interface. We know where we're heading, but. I'm going to write some test cases anyway. I'm going to drive. I'm going to start with a test case anyway, because I mean, otherwise, how will I know if it actually works? Section. Kernighan and Plogger start by uh, sorting an array of integers, so uh, we can start there as well. I'm going to start there too. Integers, but uh, I'm not going to start with with an array because you know we're not. We're not animals now. Let's start with a with a vector, like uh, you know we're living in the 21st living in the 21st century now. We can use a slightly more sophisticated data structure, and actually, let's not call it unsorted because the first thing we're going to do is uh, sort it. Now. Standard sort takes a pair of iterators as its input, the, the first and last of the sequence that you want to, um, to sort, but I'm not going to worry about that yet. Let's just get it sorted and we'll worry about the, the interface later. And when it's sorted, what's it going to look like? Well, it's going to look like, like that, right? That's going to be okay. So let's say let's assert that. Say that's what we're looking for. I want my sample once it's been sorted. I want my sample to look like my expected value. Now the C line is already telling me that this isn't going to compile because I haven't written the function yet. So let's uh, let's go on and write something there. Space sticks. All the code I've been writing for this is in the sticks namespace which is software tools in X and so far X is only C++ you know maybe one day there'll be something else so I'll say bubble sort and at the moment I'm giving it a, a vector of int I take by reference because we're going to operate on it in place boom and let's see what happens there build 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 ba, 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 ba. I'm sure this can be made to build quicker, but I'm not any kind of CMake expert or indeed IDE expert. I just let it go on with it. So there we go. That's failing, which is exactly what I'd expect. So I've got a failing test. Brilliant. Got a little stubborn implementation. Let's make it pass. I could just return a constant. Uh, I could just, you know, a reset sample, but let's. Um, Let's uh, just let's do this. Or I, I could have called sort, I suppose. Um, and if we if we run that again, then um, hopefully this is going to pass. And often when you when you see people doing exercises like this, they say do the simplest thing you can to make it uh, make it pass and they return a constant or something and people when I've spoken to people about this when I've been working with people I said well why would I do that this is you know that's like a, maybe that's fine for your toy examples but for real code that's going into production why would I do that and the reason you do that is because it tells you now that your test works so if I call this function and it, this function does the right thing then my test is working and that's actually an important thing to know because if your test isn't right, you're not going to do the right, you know, you're not going to write the implement the right code. So let's actually let's break that test again, turn that around. And this is going to fail now because obviously that, that reverse is the wrong thing to do. 
Come on, fellows. Bang, there we are. So that's not working anymore. So, maybe we can, let's think about a real, a real implementation of bubble sort. So, bubble sort, it, it, we start at the beginning, we sort of index along, and we start at the first item, index zero, and we carry on, not necessarily to the end, but to some boundary condition. And we do it a step at a time. And for each pair in the sequence, we say, well, if the next one, o i plus one, is uh, smaller than the current one, then I need to exchange them, I need to swap them. So we can do a classic two variable swap here. Is my son hoovering upstairs? Brilliant, brilliant timing. And sample i equals t. So that's, I think, that's going to, this feels like it's going to work for one bubble, one iteration. But what about that, uh, that boundary condition? Um, oh. That boundary condition. So to begin with, I'm gonna, the the first pass through we go right to the end. So we go to the last index, and the last index is is one less than size. If the size is five, the last index is four. So let's say sample size minus one, and we come down one each time until we get to that last pair, which feels like that, and then each time we'll we'll bring it down. And this is already, I've already typed a lot of code without actually building it and compiling it, which feels a little bit weird. There's, there's more complexity here than I would normally like. I mean, look, we've got two nested for loops and an if. And I've got friends who would say the fact I've even put, had to put these little explanatory comments in here is, is showing me that there's a, there's a complexity issue here. But let's let's set that aside for the moment let's let's see if that actually works let's see so uh, well it compiles that's still got seven lines without a syntax error that's got to be some kind of record but if we look at the result it didn't pass it almost passed Look at that, so we, we, we sorted the top end, but didn't actually quite go far enough, which things like that boundary condition has to come down one. Let's have a look. I'll take that boundary all the way to the end. Ba, 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 ba. Brilliant, so that's passed. So my test here is passing. Now, in as as Kenning and Plauga go through the chapter, they they implement another type of sort, a merge sort, and they do that for integers. But then they come to write a program that sorts uh, the lines in a text file, and they have to re-implement that merge sort to operate on um, strings of characters. And that, you know, that feels not very C plus plusy. We we know that we can uh, we can reuse these functions. So let's um, let's sort some strings. Uh, let's say auto uh, sample. Let's give it a vector. I must just say that I want a string there because otherwise it'll it'll uh, initialize to um, const characters. I don't really want that. Uh, oh, a a b. Do that A A A. So I, uh, oops, I'm done. Let's do that, and we'll sort it. Bubble sort sample, and the uh, expected is going to be. Uh, A A 
AA, AAB, and then AAB, ABC. That feels about right. And that's going to say sample, same as expected. And C line is already telling me that this is not going to compile. Uh, it's, this is actually a reasonably good error message. Non const L value reference. So I want to take a reference to, uh, I'm expecting a vector int, and I can't, the function wants a vector int, and it can't bind to a vector, and this is a long way of saying string, vector string. But well, that makes sense, doesn't it? I can't pass a parameter of the wrong type. But what I can do is, if we go back to our function here, we can parameterize on this type. We can just hoik the whole lot out there, and we can say, well, actually, this is a template function, and it's templated on some class, which I'm going to call container. And we can we can pop that in there. And now, when I call it with a vector of int, it will instantiate this function for a vector of int. And when I call it with a vector of string, it should instantiate with a vector of string. So if I look down to the bottom here, hopefully, it's no longer complaining. So I should be able to run this, and both our tests should pass. Fantastic. Brilliant. Commit that. Ship it. But this, this first of all, this isn't the interface I want, and this this implementation is it's just not very, not very C plus plus, is it? If I'm going to make it look like std sort, std sort takes iterators. And it takes and it actually let's drive this out in a slightly different way. What happens if instead of sorting a vector of integers, we give it a different container type? A list of integers. I think that's going to drive my implementation out in a slightly happier way. Um, I need to import list. That's what this is telling me. It doesn't know what list is. No member name list and name space stood. So if we pop up to the top, include list, and that should be happy. It says it's going to compile. Let's give it a go. So what's this saying? In instantiation of bubble sort list, bubble sort container, when I give it a list, it's no match for the square bracket operator. And that makes sense because um, we can't do random access. We can't do indexed access into a list. List is a, it's a linked list. We want to discourage random access into it. So we can't index along it. We're gonna have to use iterators to drive that along. So if we stop thinking about this as a, if we stop thinking about this as an index and let's say, well actually I want that to be an iterator. So we're going to start we're going to go from the beginning of the sample up to our boundary. And we'll not worry that the boundary is we'll, we'll sort that out in a moment. Move that along. And then I can drop in, instead of current, instead of sample i, I can say the, the contents of current. And I can drop that in there. And I can drop that in there. So what's this next sample? What's the next sample from current? Well, that's going to be the next one on from the current iterator. And there's a little standard library function next that gives you the iterator that points to the next iterator after the one you give it. 
and now I can put next in there as well. Start next. Okay, but this is still talking in terms of um, this is still working in terms of indexing, and I suppose we could. I mean, we could work out what the end iterator is, the last iterator is based on this boundary condition, but we can cast this, we can convert this boundary into, a, into an iterator as well. So the last, in this is to get us the last index. So actually, if we say we want to have an iterator that points to the one before the end, because end is always off the end, if you like, it's it's one beyond the last item. We can use the so uh, we can we can convert this into an iterator in the same way. So the let's uh, let's get rid of that, and we can use the 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 pair, the opposite of stood next. We can say I want the previous iterator, the one before the end of my sample, and I'm going to go down until I get to what I say, the beginning of my sample, and oh, put that in there. So now I'm going from one before the end down to the beginning, and this is going from beginning up to my boundary. And that is all talking in terms of iterators. Let's give that a spin. Fantastic. Fantastic. So now I've given it a vector of int, a vector of string, and a list of integers, so I've gone, I've sort of parameterized it in lots of different ways. And now this is all in terms of iterators. There must be more we can do here. This is this is a bit scuzzy, right? It doesn't look great. What's all that going on? That must happen a lot, swapping the contents of two iterators, what two iterators are pointing at. And indeed, uh, I found out that there is a function to do that, a standard function to do that. So we can, we can get that away, as so that's, that's looking a bit better. And uh, do, do, do. Build, 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 and hopefully it'll all still be green. Let's find out. Boom, green. Commit that. So now we've got all these in terms of um, end and begin, begin and end, then actually that starts to look like our std sort interface. If we instead take our two iterators and pass them in directly, Then, actually, I'm, I'm starting to meet my the requirement I gave myself that this is uh, an interface like the standard sort interface. But of course, now I've changed that interface. You can see how this is lit up already. These these things aren't going to compile. Now I could go in and change them, but I'm going to add an overload. I'm good, so I'm going to retain that container interface and I'm just going to forward it on to the iterator interface. And to do that, actually, I'm not going to take it by reference. I'm going to take it by forwarding reference. And I can't give you... There's, there's a good reason for doing this, which is frankly beyond me, 
but I read a very good article on it by uh, Jonathan McCara, uh, which I'll, I'll include a link in the show notes below, uh, to explain why this is the best choice for this kind of forwarding function. And then rather than calling begin and end the begin and end member functions on sample, I'm going to use the standard uh, begin and end functions. So what that means is that if you know if if the thing I pass in has begin and end, then it will call those. But if it has a, if it's an array or something, it knows what to do with an array and it'll magically sort it out for a wider range of uh, of things than just the standard containers. So there we go. Let's let's do that. That's all my little markers have gone away there. That's lovely. I have a feeling. I have a feeling that this is part of the reason for this is to allow sort of an easier migration path to ranges when the ranges implementation start coming through. But I'm not. Uh, up enough on that to say with any certainty, but I'm pretty confident this is the right thing. Okay, there we go. There's our thing. So I'm almost there with my sort standard sort like interface. But there is one other trick that standard sort can pull that um, we haven't that I haven't got to yet. And for that, I'm going to need another test. In addition to the iterators that bound the sequence that I want to sort, I can also pass in a custom comparator. So I can change the sort order. Um, there we go. So Actually, let's let's do this in a slightly different way. But our auto sample is a std vector uh, three, four, two, one, five. Let's say three, two, one. So that's um, and let's make our exemplar. Let's just take a copy of that, and then we'll sort it with our bubble bubble sort. And let's sort our exemplar with sort. Oh dear. And I need to um, let's pop that in there. Lovely. And then obviously I want my sample to match my exemplar. And if we run this now, we're, we're, we'd expect this to work, right? And, it, and intuitively, it is going to work. And it is working because I haven't done what my test case is going to be yet, which is to pass in, what I can do is pass in here uh, a comparison object, a comparison function, or a, a function object, or a lambda, or whatever I like, and to change the sort order. So if I pass in the, the standard greater uh, object as a, as a comparator, this sort is going to sort it from biggest to smallest, rather than from smallest to biggest. So we'll see this test fail and then we'll need to make it work there we go so that has comprehensively failed so I've sorted my sort to sorted them smallest to biggest but I've actually the standard sort has used its comparator to sort them biggest to smallest so obviously ideally I just want to pop that in there, right? 
I'm just going to say blah blah. I said, no, your your function doesn't doesn't take three arguments. So we better sort that out. Let's say class comparator. I guess that'll that'll do, and then it's, I need to uh, I need to pass some kind of comparator in here because that wants two things. So let's uh, let's just give it uh, the <laughs> the do nothing uh, the do nothing lambda. There we go. That satisfied that. Let's see what happens there. It'll compile. Hopefully, my existing the three before three top test cases will work. The last one will still fail. Excellent. Those still three still work. This one fails. Let's put that comparator to the test. Let's take that comparator. And we'll pop it in here. So this is how you do what you do. You call your comparator function with your two um, oops, your two values. I do need to do that. And then if this is uh, obviously if this is if this fails, then I swap them. Now this is complaining. Because here, I've passed in just a just a nonsense comparator. So let's put in standard less, a standard less object. Hopefully that'll work. That should compile. And in my case here, we should start to uh, we should start to work. Brilliant. So I can plug in a custom comparator. But here I've I've just I've hard coded in my, my less than comparator. So if I if I try and do this, if I try and pass a custom comparator to my container version, that's not gonna work. So I need to I really need to finish off by putting a Here as well. So comparator, comparator, and forward that through. And so this one compiles. This one's going to compile, and hopefully it's going to work. But the other, these, oh, these are all failing. Though. These won't build. So what am I going to do? Well, I could go through and put explicitly put in the less than comparison but the less than comparison is my default it should be what I get anyway and so we can default that so well, I'm going to put the less than comparator in there um, but we're still not compiling because it can't infer the template argument it can't there's not enough information to work out what this type should be but I've said over here what the type should be so I can pop that I can default my whoops default my template argument as well there we go so that I'm saying well if in the absence of anything else comparator is going to be a stood less and so this is a compile time defaulting and then or this is a type defaulting and then when I come to call it and if I haven't provided that comparator type then I instantiate uh, as my default instantiation is a, is a less than object this is a less than type this is a, a less object which is then going to get passed down and this one can infer the type because I've given it here so now hopefully everything will build and everything will run Bingo. Great. Uh, and so as a last little sort of throw of the dice, 
let's just do 5n. Because I've now got, I'm calling my container version using the defaults, uh, my container version using an explicit comparator, and I know my container version calls the iterator version with an explicit comparator. So let's just call the container version the default comparator and this well it looks happy but I don't think it's gonna work because it's tried to match the, uh, the the two argument version and so it's trying to use that as a trying to use this as a container that's no good so I think I think I think I think if I also if I repeat this defaulting up here and we make that we put the default operator in there as well I think everything should fall out so for my it's it'll so when I come to compile this the compiler saying oh look you've got two arguments there let's try it with this and it'll try and call std begin on on an iterator and that will fail and the std end will fail and go well actually no okay well maybe this doesn't apply what else can we try oh well maybe it's this because this is defaulted i think that's how it's going to work let's give it a spin and find out compilers frankly magical magical pieces of software well blimey so there we go there we go everything i've written my bubble sort i can call it with a just a container a container with different types these are integers these are strings I can call it with uh, using iterators and I can also call it I can pass in a container with a custom comparator or I can pass in a iterator and a custom comparator and now I have a bubble sort that I will probably never want to use in real code but I've kind of driven out through the tests I've driven out this standard style interface so I've got the interface I'm aiming for I've got a reasonable I mean I'm still not happy with these nested loops but that's how it works that's there in the implementation there's no getting away from that I don't think so yeah not bad thank you everyone <laughs>